Dear friends in Christ, the period of Lent begins today, Ash Wednesday. Today's liturgy is marked uniquely by the reception of ashes on our foreheads, a reminder of our nothingness, and an invitation to undertake a humble journey of sincere repentance, confident in the abundance of God's mercy and compassion. The first reading from the prophet Joel invites every one of us to this humble journey of sincere repentance and return to God, from elders and children and even nursing infants, to the bridegroom and the bride and even the priests ministering on the altar. In the second reading, Paul considers himself and his companions as ambassadors of Christ, entrusted with the message of reconciliation which we are all invited to promptly respond to now, not later, for now is the given or accepted day and time of God's salvation. Later is not a given. In the Gospel reading, Jesus teaches a method we are to employ as we embrace the Lenten practices of doing charity, praying and fasting. The method is simple, in secret not to be seen by the eyes of men, but by the secret eyes of God alone, who is himself secret to the human eyes. The first reading comes from the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verses 12 to 18. The name Joel from Hebrew Yoel means Yahweh is God. The book reflects familiarity with Jewish liturgy and temple worship. Hence, Scholars of the book consider it as deriving from a priestly cycle in Jerusalem, who, in the face of the calamities of locust and drought, invites all the people to raise a cry of sincere repentance to the Lord, including elders and children and even nursing infants, the bridegroom and the bride and even the priests ministering on the altar. The portion we have for our first reading invites the people to sincere repentance and confidence in God's mercy. It teaches that the journey of penitence has to be above all spiritual, a conversion of the heart. Return to me with all your heart, says the prophet. Tear your hearts and not your garments. The reading also assures us of God's graciousness, his slowness to anger and abundance in mercy. As a result, we can be confident that if we sincerely repent, we will obtain mercy and forgiveness of our sins. Our second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul, chapter 5, verse 20 to chapter 6, verse 2. In this second letter, Paul explains the purpose of his ministry to the Corinthians, which is reconciliation. He urges the Corinthians to be reconciled with God. Christ's death was for all people to make them part of the new creation. In our reading, Paul reminds the Corinthians that they are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador, presbeuo in Greek, means an envoy and in terms of the apostolic ministry, a representative of Christ. Therefore, for them to be true ambassadors for Christ, the Corinthians must first be reconciled to God in Christ. They must remember that Christ had no sin. Even when he was tempted, he did not sin. Still, for our sake, he made himself to be sin. Here, Paul means that Christ substituted himself for sinful humanity before God in order to take away our sins through his sacrifice on the cross. Jesus Christ made himself sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. 
through Christ's substitution for us as sinners, he has given us the grace to stand before God, no longer standing condemned as sinners, but as God's children, capable of living the life of God in Christ. Consequently, we must collaborate with that grace of God so that the grace that Jesus won for us may not be in vain. Our reading concludes with a quotation from Isaiah 49 verse 8. This quotation refers to God's restoration of the people from exile. Just as God restored the people from exile, he now reconciles the Corinthians and the people of God, all of us, to himself through Christ. Jesus Christ ushers in the dawn of salvation. This is the favorable time, the day of salvation. And Lent is a favorable time of salvation. It is a time to be reconciled with ourselves, others, and God. In the Gospel, Jesus instructs his disciples on the proper way to perform the three fundamental Jewish demonstrations of religious devotions, which are also the three traditional pillars of Lent, that is prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, without losing the essence of these pious actions, which is eternal reward in heaven with God. The gospel is very relevant as we begin our Lenten observances today so that we may focus on the spirit, the value and essence of Lent and not be distracted by the outward expressions of our actions. First, Jesus said, when you give alms, do not sound your trumpet like the hypocrites who seek human validation rather than heavenly reward. Give alms secretly and your heavenly father who sees in secret will reward you. Likewise, when you pray, do not make a public display like the hypocrites. Instead, pray in the privacy of your home and God who sees in secret will reward you. And finally, when you fast, do not make a public show of it like the hypocrites. Rather, observe it in private and your heavenly father who sees it in secret will reward you. A hypocrite from the Greek hypocrites is an actor, a pretender, or a person who puts on a false appearance and acts in contradiction to their stated beliefs. A Christian is not a make-believe actor who lives a fake life, different from their Christian character. A Christian is one whose yes means yes and no means no. See Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. Therefore, these Jewish religious devotions and pillars of Lent prayer, fasting, and almsgiving are intended to symbolize the inner disposition of Christians who, in order to attain a genuine conversion from weakness to strength, evil to good, and death to life in Christ Jesus, submit their entire lives and wills to God. Therefore, at a time when our modern society is inundated with public displays of charity on social media, with an arrogant, holier than thou display of religiosity and a hypocritical sense of moral superiority over others. In fact, with the constant display of fake life, Jesus, during this Lenten season, condemns service with ulterior and selfish motives and invites us to engage in service for the sake of righteousness, as that is the proper way to live as a Christian with a good conscience and hope for eternal peace with God. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening and may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page, Devar Adonai, or visit our website, devaradonai.org.